Hey, it's Saturday the uh, 27th, quarter to 7 o'clock. What we're seeing here is an out of focus view of Messier 31. I'm trying to rush through the process of getting everything set up before the equatorial flips and we lose the actual uh, galaxy. I'll play with it a little bit just in case. All right, I do need to get out there and set focus. And the reason I have to reset focus is I just spent about 15 minutes recollimating the scope. Apparently as it was shipped, it was not properly collimated. There was a significant difference between the straight on refractor uh, ST80 and when I mounted up the uh, El Quattro, the 150 millimeter F4 Newt. Very fast neutral problematic anyway, so I knew the collimation was wrong and went in out of focus. There was some significant comb in the middle of the field, so I corrected all that. Now I got to get out there and bring it to focus so we can get a decent view of Messier 31 before we miss it all together due to the Earth's rotation. We go over to the Pleiades and you can see we're still out of focus. All of the focus rings are still a little oblate from the alignment. I didn't want to spend any more time on it. Okay, so I'm going to have to guess probably a little more in focus than out because when I went out of focus drawing the focuser knob so that the, the ZWO imager was further away from the objective, things really disappeared. Let's try again. All right, it's been more than an hour. Uh, most of it spent trying to dial in the focus since you can't do it real time. Of course, I achieved focus with the eyepiece, but then I dropped in the field flattener and the ZWO camera, and it had an entirely different focal plane. I think I'm going to leave it like this. This is the Pleiades, by the way, SCA 45. I'm going to go on to my list, and we're going to start with MGC 891, hoping that the scope doesn't pull flip, there's too much light. I'll also turn off the light here in the room. Here we have our unveiling, and let's see if we actually got anything here. Well, I'm not seeing, oh, there it is on the screen, NGC 891. And we can see the bisecting lane. Not particularly bright. Let's see what we can do about changing the presentation a little bit. If we push it off to here, let's see what happens. How about over here? Oh, yeah. Much clearer. All right, yeah, we got a background sky light, but yeah, the dark lane across bisecting this beautiful edge on NGC 891 looking pretty good. If we push the brightness up even further, it becomes more present on the screen. However, the aesthetics gets very poor. Not in a bad screen position, however. I notice there is a zoom function over here. Oh, I wonder what it did there. Okay, I can just click on the screen to get a zoom. This is a better view than I got through the ST80 uh, about a week ago when I was initially setting everything up. And we can eliminate, of course, bars and the screen components, menuing components, and we can get a good look. I have seen this central bar through a 6-inch telescope under 5055 skies. It's very high in the sky, after all. It is in Perseus, Perseus, on the border of Perseus and Andromeda. That's not too bad, given the fact the sky is so bright out there. So I am not displeased. However, let's move on to other studies, and I'll give you some data on this tomorrow. Unfortunately, I can't verbalize the data because it's not available to me. And I don't have another computer set up to look it up at the same time, which would get rather unwieldy. But this is a start, and we shall go on from here. Okay, at about an average of, tw of 25 kilobits per, per second, it took about 10 minutes to load NGC 925. I'll have to check the antenna position. Galaxy is located pretty much where 891 was, which was... Which was uh, horizontal. This one's vertical galaxy. We're seeing the core of the galaxy. We're seeing extensions in both directions. I'll have to gather the data on it and do some calculations to get an idea of what we, what size scope, for instance, and what sky conditions would reveal this. 
I also adjusted the focus a little bit and I think I messed it up. I'm going to go in a different direction with the focus than I did last time. <coughs> Excuse me. But here's our vision of NGC 925, a mere five second one stack exposure. Not too bad for given the sky conditions. Here, let's have one look at it without any of the menuing options on the screen. Clearly to me, the stars are a little out of focus. I think I'm gonna push it in a little bit now. I pushed it out, but that does give you a sense of an edge on galaxy with a brightish core, but not a very bright core with extensions going pretty much to the 12 and six o'clock positions. All right, that's an improvement. I pressed the focuser closer to the scribe line that I made originally when we determined focus with the Zewo camera. Uh, the gap's not quite as long, so it looks like focuser has, after collimating, had to go a little bit further out in order to achieve focus. So this is NGC 1023. Beautiful Edgeon galaxy with a very bright core and extensions going off, I would say, by about the whole aspect uh, is probably, it's probably some six or seven arc minutes in extension. I may adjust the focus again slightly. The stars look a little bit too large to me, but I'm not seeing any central vacuoles in them. So, NGC 1023, I'm gonna do a couple more galaxies and knock off for the evening because most of my time has been spent dealing with the tech instead of uh, collimating the scope, getting the uh, finder scope aligned to the new collimation, as well as dealing with issues that had to do with the focuser. So maybe three more galaxies and then I'm gonna carpe, knock them out. But do, let me give you a view, a full screen view of NGC 10. 23 with its brilliant core and extensions. However, we're not seeing any dark lanes. But there does appear to be a bit right here of what may be an H2 region of star formation in this galaxy. Coming in on it. There we go. That's the zoom function right there with the camera. Okay, here we have NGC 2146 from the previous evening. This will be a nice Compero. Here is our view. It's looking towards the north. The sky is particularly uh, luminous to the north. I think we are getting a better view this evening than we got last evening. Another nice edgy on galaxy. We can play with some settings here. Ooh, that's aesthetically nicer, but we don't get much of a view of the galaxy. We're picking up more of its luminosity. Let's stay with this right here. NGC 2146, I believe, is a 10-inch scope optimized study from the Astro Geekjoy uh, Star Atlas, Deep Sky Atlas. And that basically means you should see some kind of a sense of the core with extensions. It's through a 10-inch telescope when stars, neighboring stars are in the 5 to 0.5 magnitude range. Give you a nice look without any of the menu items. We'll do a little zoom in on it. Bright central core with unwinding spiral arms. NGC 2146. What we have here is a very faintish galaxy. I'm not sure what its magnitude is because I do not have the data before me, but the Astro Geek Joy Deep Sky Atlas said this is a 12 inch study galaxy, which means you should see more than the core. And that's about all we're seeing right there with a little bit of an aura around it of luminosity. So we are not specking out to 12 inch tonight, but this is the worst possible part of the sky. It's towards the north where there's a lot of luminosity looming from the commercial areas north of us here in Tucson, Arizona. But you know what I'm gonna do? Let's play with this a little bit. Ooh, that brought it out. Push it back. Okay, we're losing the galaxy now, but everything looks a lot nicer, doesn't it? Aesthetics are improved. Here comes the galaxy. But generally speaking, you get the best view when you put the uh, obstruction slider, which cuts off all the light that's up to this point here, right at the peak of the curve. That's a good place to work it. 
And we can brighten up the image a little bit by doing this. And in doing so, we're bringing out a little bit more, but no, we are not getting what I call an optimal view of NGC 2336. Let's go ahead and capture one more before we revisit the great nebula in Orion, our own galaxy's H2 star formation region. A nice upload rate on this one. Oh, you're gonna like this galaxy. It's NGC 2403. It is a galaxy that gives a good view in an 8-inch telescope. Let's see if we can find some optimal settings. Obviously a face on spiral. Okay, let's play with this one a little bit. Uh, what happens there? Oh, we can make it disappear. Look at that. All right, we're coming back online now. You can see the galaxy. There's a lot of spark sprinkling on the screen. If we go back to our normative setting here, the galaxy looks quite expansive. And now what we'll do is try to play with the aesthetics a little bit. So it looks like a face on spiral galaxy. We're not getting a very good view, but we can live with it for the time being. Given the observing conditions are not to be extolled here in the backyard of La Casita in Tucson, Arizona. Let's have a look at that full screen view. Give it a couple of seconds. Yeah, let's, and let's walk up to it a little bit. Yep, we lose it right about here, don't we? But we get the full screen view. Notice everything tonight's been centering up pretty good. I still don't like the focus. Uh, I may have gone a little too far outside of focus. I'll play with that. Just a minute inward focus twist, and we'll see what that looks like when we go to the Great Nebula of Orion, M42. Okay, while we're waiting, for SA42 to emerge from the roof line, let's have a look at a three second exposure of the Crab Nebula, SA1. Pushing this alt slider all the way to the right, moving it to the left, it gets rather bright, still extremely pixelated, not very satisfying. All right, let's see what else we can do. Let's try a Come on, drop down. Oh, that's weird. It's loading again. Oh, I see what happened. I, must have pre I pressed the circular button and it excluded me from being able to change the exposure time to the normative five seconds. Single pass five seconds we use here in north central Tucson. All right, folks, this is going to have to be our Carpe Noctum moment. We are looking at a five second exposure of Messier 1, the Crab Nebula in Taurus. Uh, terrible background sky. Actually, this is probably one of the best parts of the sky. I do not understand why it looks so poor. Uh, notice the slide bar settings. However, there is a little bit of color. I'm seeing some color in the nebulosity there. So, Consider this an evening of exploration. We saw some galaxies, uh, went after this nebula. We didn't really have enough time to wait for FCA 42 to climb above the roof line. So with that, I am going to say, Carpe.